and let it stick. In Jesus' name. Amen. God gave me a, 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 a directive. And we're going to have to renounce false deities. The main deity is the one in your mirror. What has happened is there was a false power shift where we began to believe we had power. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power. And we actually thought we had the power. And so that dynamic has hindered many believers from receiving from the power source himself because you thought you had power. So we're going we're gonna to look at real power. Somebody say real power. real power. In order for your healing to stick and stay, in order for God to really use you in a great and mighty way, you have to tap back into real power. Many of us are getting depressed just like sinners. Come on, fearful just like unbelievers because we have not remembered where power comes from. And God told me to, to I wrote this, woke up this morning, wrote it again, went back to sleep, make sure it was at the first thing that I say that gets a deposit into your spirit and this is it. Say, I'm going to receive it and keep it. Unlimited power cares for you. Stay with me. Unlimited power cares for you. You know, God began to work with me and teach me on what is power. And I, and, and, and I began to, I wrote down a definition, then I began to look at definition, and this is what it says, power is the ability to make a move. She took that light. She did it. Power is the ability to make a move. You got to stay with me because many of you are, are believing God for healings, believing God for miracles. But you have to understand where power is coming from. Amen. Power is the ability to make a move. The ability to do something or act in a particular way. Amen. You are given power to move. But there are some people who are paralyzed. And they, their body tells them, you don't have power to move. Mm. Jesus would go on the scene, touch them, and restore that power. Yes. Grace gives power to move. And he began to give me this word in, in, in the word God gave me. And I want you to stay with me. Do not leave. Do not act like you're going to get the message at the end. Don't act like you're going to get a free tape. Hear this. Inertia. Inertia, it's a tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. In physics... It's a property of matter by which it continues in its existing state or rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless the state is changed by an external force. Inertia. Unmovable. Inchangeable. The human condition was in a state of inertia. No change was coming. You, you, you born, you sin, you die. You born, you sin, you die. That was the state of the human condition. It was in a state of inertia. Sometimes even in your body, you think, you know, I'm sick. You know, this is the end of me. You know, doctors give me medicine, but it ain't helping. Inertia. Amen. But there's a power that comes over inertia in, in, in things. <laughs> 
when it can move them. Amen. See, and that's the power of God. Amen. Jesus had power to come off the cross and save himself, but staying weak and dying allowed grace to come upon his life, raise him from the dead, and then give grace to everyone who believes. Amen. See, he could have came off the cross. He could have used, you know, Jesus said, I have power to give my life, and I got power to take it again. And they used the word authority. And that word authority is the Greek word exus, ex, uh, exousia. Inertia verse exousia. See, God has given you authority over your inertia. You can stay in that con condition if you want to, but he has given you authority over it. Amen. And I wrote this. It's just something new. Never said it before. Can't prove that it's a, a truth, but I wrote it and I'm going to say it. Power activate, activated. <laughs> Power activated by faith can be called authority. Or exousia. Power, dunamis, dynamite, action, activated by faith, can be called authority. All right. Hallelujah. They were amazed with Jesus. They said, but of course, his word was with power. They said, with such authority he spoke. Whenever you release faith, that's your authority to have power exercised on your behalf. Amen. I know you're a little stuck on the beginning part of my message, and you have to stay there until God frees you from it. Because you think you had power in and of yourself. You have no power. That has been blocking us from day one, thinking that we had power. It put us into a state of pride, and God knew it was there, and, we, and he said, I refuse to let something happen as long as you think you're doing it. Wow. The power of God will rest on you, and it will flow through you when you know that it's his power. Amen. When you think it's your power, because you're, for, for whatever reason, and if it's not clear that this power is coming from God, he will not let it flow. Jesus. Because it's more dangerous for you to think you are something than for you to know that you're nothing. Jesus. There was a man, I think his name was Festus. He began to preach and the people was like, wow, this is the power of God. And he refused to give God the glory and God struck him dead right there. Could it possibly be that God's not able to move in our lives because we don't know where the power is? Oh now you have to understand what I'm getting at. I'm getting where the power is in here and in here. I'm not talking about dunamis. I'm talking about where is the power flowing from? Because he will move your inertia. If you're in a condition, you call on Jesus, he heals the condition because he has the power. Now we got we got we got to look at this, and it's gonna really. I'm just gonna go through some old messages that you already know, and if you don't know, you're gonna be like a brand new saved person, so you're gonna get a miracle. It's harder for old heads to get saved or get the miracle because they think they know it all. Newbies, they get saved, they receive it, got a miracle. Genesis one one, y'all there? Go there. Watch this. You already seen this, but I want to just share this a little clearer with you. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, moved the inertia. See? Created. In order to create, you have to have power. In order to create, you have to have power. Now look at this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in the original is the word El-Hohim. 
The very difficult task in understanding this is the problem that certain believers, when they, when they coin a phrase and try to teach it, it throws off power. You ever heard of the term Trinity? It's a bad term. You don't need terminology because when you try to prove terminology, you, you minimize God. Elohim is grammatically a plural noun. Come on. Grammatically, it's a plural noun. And a noun is a person, place, or thing. Singular. Ah. Ah. But Elohim is the plural noun. How are you going to have a plural noun? God can. In the beginning, Elohim, a plural Elohim. Now, this does not mean that God is more than one. There's only one God. But he's God. <laughs> and this is what he says. Let us. <laughs> See? That's what he said. Let us. So it validates the fact that he's an Elohim. Let us. Let us make man in our image. And he said, let us give them dominion. Dominion doesn't mean power. Dominion is an authority. See, you have authority. Now, could they do anything outside of God? Of course not. Unless God gave them dominion and power. Amen. So in Elohim, it means that I have power to create. So what did I do? I said, let there be light and there was light. So Elohim cares for you. Amen. And if he says in Janet's body, I want healing, there's healing in Janet's body. Why would you say there's no healing in your body? When you counter Elohim, all you're doing is slowing up what he really wants done. No matter what the doctor says, they can help, they can do certain things, but it's what you really believe about your Elohim. Let us make God in our image. The spirit of the Lord hovered Elohim said, see, God, the Spirit, the Word, Father, Son, Spirit. Get the term Trinity, tr what's that word? See, I, I got it out of my mind, I couldn't even say it. Because those are the words that make people think we believe that there's three gods. We don't believe in three gods. We don't, forget about the Trinity, I'm not even going to try to explain it. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Peanut butter <laughs> jelly. See, y'all got bread. We got quarts. I ain't, ain't saying no bread. That's my message. <laughs> but we're going to get it today. We're going to recognize that power, real power that removes inertia, is coming from God. The opposite of inertia is actually power. A God has to have power. Every religion on the face of the earth have rules and regulations and their God has no power to prove that he moved. So many religious people are trying to prove to themselves that there is a God. You don't have to prove anything if your God is a real God. That's right. That's right. Don't worry. If I go slow, it's only because we need to go slow. Because I know for a fact that many of us get stuck in situations just like worldly people because we don't know how to call on the power. Jesus! We use phrases, we use scriptures, we use different things, but it's not those things that's going to move the power. It's knowing that the power is moving. Many times we have faith in our faith. The Bible says, have the faith of God. 
Genesis 17:1 says this, and when Abram was 90 years old and 9, 99, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Amen. The almighty God. And that name is El Shaddai. The almighty God. Now watch this. The God that can do anything. He says, walk before me and be perfect. Exodus 6, 3. God's talking to uh, Moses. He said, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now, we do not, and remember this, we are not uh, descendants of Moses. We're not. We are of the seed of Abraham. Therefore, we receive directly from God Almighty. I'm not trying to mess, mess up your theology, but I need all of us to get back to the place where God has the power. Amen. 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 Not in your faith. Yes. See, we have, we have transferred God's power to our ability. Mm -hmm. It has slowed up our movement. You know, uh, I think I talked about this sometime during the week. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In the verse after that says, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouts of grace. Every unmovable situation in your life moves at the sound of grace. I'm trying to make this make sense to you. Jesus said it like this. Well, John said it concerning Jesus. Let me, let me just get it. So you don't think that I'm fabricating. John 1.12. Watch this. Stay with me. Do not touch that down. Because you're going to feel something moving inside of you this morning. There's a healing that's going to take place. Not just in your spirit, but in your physical body. Some of your very minds are going to get fixed. You've been so used to faking the Christian funk that you ain't, you're not even healed. You're not even delivered. You have the capacity, but you're not walking in it. You're walking in a head knowledge deliverance. John 1.12. Look what it says. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He's given authority, faith, to believe God to such a degree that you can become his son. Amen. And the last time I checked, a son is a direct descendant of a father. And everything in a father is in a son. So with your ability, with your authority, with your desire, with the, with the, the knowing of God, he made you his son. He's given you the ability to be his son, his child. Yes. And you and I have the responsibility to understand, I am not my own. Amen. We go in and out, and that's when the power falls off. Yes. When we start doing things independent of God. Yes. I heard this when I was driving this morning. God, he woke you up this morning. Find a reason to live. Jesus. Don't just exist. Find a reason to live. 